Okay, what are we, what are we saying? Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to design a surround for our bell housing so that we are FD compliant for Prospect. Just to quickly go over why we need to do that. We run a very small clutch setup on our transmission. Transmission is just over here in the corner. And they don't make an SFI rated bell housing for my setup. So we have to build a quarter inch thick steel surround because of the technology advancements that we are able to obtain. We can just 3D scan our transmission tunnel, 3D scan the transmission, build a surround that is easily removable because we cannot use the mounts that the bell housing uses on the engine that is uh, part of the rule so we have to bolt the surround to the chassis so we are taking these dots and we are dotting up our chassis these are targets actually not dots but basically the 3d scanner uses these targets as a referencing point so that it can collect data from around the points whenever you're scanning it doesn't matter how many dots or how far apart the dots are or where the dots are at all it's a targeting system so that the 3d scanner knows where it is in 3d space and with that that's basically all you need to do to start scanning stuff then when we go to play around with the scan in our software that's when we can origin it and pick a location and determine where the scan is in space by uh, zeroing it out on our XYZ axis. And then I can bring it into our uh, Fusion 360 and manipulate it to where I can build a surround that's gonna fit perfectly. It's gonna be removable and easy to work on, which is the key. So let's go. We start, we already dotted up the firewall when the car was on the ground. So we just need to take these off and place them on the chassis. Now, these are magnetic dots. You can, get, uh, you can get sticky ones, you can get adhesive ones, you can get magnet ones, and we just need to place them randomly throughout. Whenever the scanner is scanning in its range of view, it needs to be seeing a minimum of three targets at any given time, and that will be enough for it to know where it is in space. And it saves the targets in its memory so when you come back over a spot that's no longer in view as long as there's targets there that it has seen already it will know exactly where it is and be able to create a nice mesh surface for us to use and my main points of reference for this is going to be the bulk of the transmission tunnel here the transmission mounts because when i scan the transmission i'm going to use these mounts as my locator to where the transmission actually sits in the car and once i put those two together i'll be able to see how much room i have to make a surround that meets the requirements for prospect which obviously the most important thing is if the clutch fails and explodes the surround needs to protect my legs from the shrapnel because the shrapnel will just blow right through that bell housing. It doesn't matter where the dots go, like I said, but it, it is important that the dots or the targets aren't gonna fall off or move because if the targets move in relation to what you've already scanned, you're gonna get an error on your scanner so this is my main point of reference these two holes these two holes and i don't really need to go much further back than that because my surround is actually going to be in this area So to set up the scanner, all you really need is a power supply and a USB in your computer. Other than that, it's extremely easy to use. I like to always keep it in the case so I don't break it. As soon as that light comes on, green means go. Uh, with our couple buttons here, we can increase and decrease the shutter speed. We can zoom in, we can freeze frame, and we can only do a couple things from here. But basically, that's all you need to do in order to get a perfect scan. So I simply just come in, hit the button, 
and let the magic happen. So as you can see, the scan is relatively incomplete, but we have the data that we are really after, which is this front section here, a general size and shape, and then the mounting points where I can put holes on my program and locate. So once we hit stop scan, this is gonna be the rendering process. This is what the uses the computer's power to generate this file. Generally these files, like this file, will probably be around a gigabyte of data. So it'll also um, make the scan look a lot better. What you were looking at right there was just a very general idea of what we just scanned. And this is gonna mesh it and put it all together. And we'll be able to really zoom in on the details in a minute. So the scan is complete enough for what we need it for. Um, you can see when you zoom in on the details, it's, uh, it's very accurate. It's very cool to look at. And we can pull whatever data we want from this scan, which the majority of the data that we're using are these transmission mounts, which we're gonna line up with the transmission mount that's on my GSR, so that when I have the two scans, I can align them using those points. And then I can insert my transmission virtually into my car and build a nice surround with lots of room that meets our requirements as it's gonna bolt in easy. And then we'll go to our water jet and we'll cut out all the pieces and, uh, and, and weld them in. So it's gonna be a fairly seamless process. I hope we might have, well, I mean, you know what? There really isn't any margin of error when you have the physical part virtually in your computer. Like if you mess something up, you will be able to see exactly what you messed up on. There's no question on interference points and stuff. So let's keep going. We're gonna uh, target up our GSR. We'll probably just do it right on the ground. And then we do this thing where we, we'll have to flip the transmission and scan the underside and scan the top. Um, I can do this thing where I delete all the targets off of the ground. I can flip it and then it'll pick them up as new targets. Then I'll have a GSR scan to use at my disposal for whatever I may need it for down the road. Maybe we'll make a sweet tube chassis car or something and I'm like, I can just pop it right in. I don't know, we'll see. But the point of that is the more stuff you scan, as long as you're keeping on an external hard drive and it's not slowing down your computer, you can't scan too many things, you really can't. So we're just gonna keep going and uh, yeah. On your mark, get set. Okay, so we have our water jet cut quarter inch thick steel surround plates for the bell housing in order to be FD legal. It really didn't look like much. I, I jumped the gun and bent this without filming, but it's, uh, it doesn't look like much. I've got my little bend angles here on how far to do each piece. I'm hoping it goes together like it did on the computer. But uh, basically you're looking at half of the bell housing there. And this piece is gonna get welded in. It was just too many, too much of a swoop to do it all without. So I'm just gonna weld this last piece in. And then I'm probably gonna leave this seam open and I'm gonna have it bolt on. So I have one half and the bolts to the other. So I'm able to remove it off of the car. We're gonna bend up the other piece to my my angles here and hopefully the whole thing just kind of you know slaps together and and works I mean it should let's do this so 
I know this needs to be 70 degrees. I'm gonna eyeball it and then check it. I bet you this is this is 69. Ooh, 70.1. I don't know what 69 is anyways. Two more. Ah, too much, too much. You know what, two over. Not much wrong with that. I mean, it just it just jumped. I ain't gonna work. We'll do the control all minus two. Yeah, I'll, be fine. I'll take minus two out of that bad jump. That's gonna go there after we clean up Mr. Cam's tack. I'm on. <laughs> or no, no, no. We'll just delete the tip. That's my thing. Make the tip. Disappear. Tip to leak. Let's get a visual going here. Bell housing. No starter. Starter. Surround. No starter. Starter. Clearance. How I'm gonna slip it on, I'm really hoping it'll just lasso itself. With a bit of a dance. No, yeah. Ah. Might have to take the old training now and off. That's fair. That's fair. But, that's what the old computer will give you something that looks crazy to Mr. Cam but I know it works so what I'm gonna do is a hinge style I'm gonna make three pieces of this Dom a one inch piece a two inch piece and then a one inch piece an M12 bolt will go all the way through. We'll weld the middle one to the left. We'll weld the two to the right. I can pull the bolt, put it back in, and that's how we're gonna attach the top and bottom. Should be super solid, double shear. No flywheels exploding are gonna break it, so it should pass. And then we'll be able to do the old wrap around on the bell housing. The old wrap around. The old wrap around. Okay, so there's our hinge. We're gonna weld this one to the one side, these two to the other side. Bolts are all together. Got a nice selection of bolts from all the angle kits that we make. The top one is a bit longer. Might have to get a longer bolt. Five and a half, Jack. Where's the five and a half? So we put this on this seam. We weld this here, weld these there, cut the tack. And it's just like, if you've ever built a trailer that says how you do the, the tailgate hinges. If you've ever built one. If you haven't, then you got no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> no. You could just say I'm right once in a while. No. Wrong. Refusal. Wrong. Okay, just need my helmet so we can safely weld this up. I was closing my eyes, by the way. Don't look at the weld.
Oh, I should weld that. You gotta have everything the way it's gonna be or else things move when you weld it. I better weld that and then take it apart. I can weld it if which, you want a good beat on it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> There you have it. We clearance everything a little bit. Make it a little bit looser. And that's pretty much it. Take all the sharp edges off. One half. Two halves. Taylor fit. Wow. So it'll sit somewhere, somewhere around here. We'll have to be able to uh, take it off while it's on the car, which should be no problem. That's it, pretty cool. So now this bell housing is FD legal. Whether or not we saved weight, whether or not, I mean, I think QuickTime just came out with a, an SFI rated bell housing, but they were back ordered anyways. So it's not like we could have gotten it in time regardless. And it was about $1,200 US, so this was definitely cheaper. Although if I charged myself my hourly rate, maybe not. Um, but regardless, it didn't cost me much. It works. The next thing is going to be welding this to the chassis in a manner that is also removable. It's quite a it's quite a challenge actually doing this. Um, definitely not for the faint of heart. I don't I don't even know that anyone else has done it. But this is my best effort. So one step closer. I think that's it for this video, but that was pretty cool. The rest of it's not that fun anyways. So we'll see you guys on the next one. Give Sub Jack something to do. All right, over and out.